Tube. This is Amy. I am the Globetrotting Stitcher and I am back for my third episode. Um, for those of you who are, who are stumbling into this from the great wide world of YouTube, um, this is a channel about cross stitch, although occasionally I might talk about a few other things. Um, I wanted to start out today just by saying thanks so much for those of you who are coming back, who've been watching my first couple of videos. Uh, it's great to have you and um, I wanted to say thank you for all the nice comments and, and the lovely feedback this last week. It's been really fun to, to read your input. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Shiloh at XStitchMD. Um, she shouted me out on her floss tube video recently and I had a lot of folks that ended up coming over as a result. So first of all, thank you to all of you for letting me know about her shout out because I didn't know about Shiloh and I got to watch some of her videos and you guys, she is, if you don't already watch her, she is totally adorable. Um, she's from Nova Scotia and I really enjoyed, I've been kind of binging her videos since I've discovered her through, uh, through the folks that left comments for me. Um, she stitches a lot of Quaker samplers and she does uh, some Al Forest embroidery. She's doing some long dog um, and a lot of really other beautiful whips. And so if that's your jam, I would highly recommend that you check her out. She's really fun to watch. So thank you again, Shiloh. That was so sweet of you. Um, I also wanted to take a couple of minutes just to answer a few questions and comments that were left on uh, my recent videos. First of all, Heather Miller. Um, asked if I would share some techniques on stitching um, because she wants to raise her own standard of stitching. So I first of all will say, yes, I've been stitching a long time, but I am far from being an expert, Heather. Um, but uh, I, we are looking into, uh, we're, we're talking about how we can incorporate some of those things in the videos. So stay tuned for that. We're figuring it out. Um, and if that's something that folks would be interested in, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if there are some specific things that you're interested in. I have a few ideas on topics that we could cover, um, but always open to your feedback. So thank you for that. Uh, the next comment and question comes from Teresa Boyer. And Teresa said, what kind of dogs do you have and what are their names? So first of all, Teresa, you have opened Pandora's box because I'm obsessed with my dogs and I will talk about them ad nauseum. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about both of them. Uh, Bear, as you guys have all heard about in last week's video or the last video, uh, Bear is our oldest dog. He just turned six in April and um, he is a German Shepherd Golden Retriever mix. Um, both of our dogs are rescue dogs and we were really fortunate that we were able to adopt both of them when they were still puppies. Um, and we'll, we'll share some pictures of Bear. You saw some video of him, but he is a beautiful boy. He is super, super soft, super sweet. He's our little guard dog. Um, all of the bunnies and squirrels live in fear of him and he's just an absolute love. Uh, he is, he's got the, the most amazing wiggle, but like he swivels fishtails like you would not believe when he's happy. So he's a sweet boy. And then our, our other dog is Sophie and Sophie is, she has just turned four. Um, and Sophie is, she's kind of like an everything but the kitchen sink dog. We know she's got some lab. We know she's got some Staffordshire Terrier. Um, the, the genetic test results that were done on other pups in her litter, they're like, there's a lot of dogs in there somewhere, um, but she's she's also very, very sweet. And her story is a little bit sad. So as I said, we did also get her as a puppy, but we adopted her from a rescue down in Texas. And um, somewhere outside of Houston, someone found a litter of puppies and we don't know if they were abandoned or if something happened to their mama, but um, somebody just happened to see some movement in the rocks underneath a bridge and went to check it out and found this litter of puppies that were just there all by themselves, no food, no water, um, and they were in pretty bad shape. And so they got them to this rescue group. And um, fortunately they got them when they did because they, they wouldn't have survived a whole lot longer on their own. Um, and so the rescue took really great care of them. And then after a few weeks, we were able to adopt her and have her flown up to Seattle but um, even, even with good care for a few weeks, she was in pretty bad shape when we got her. She was really underweight. She was missing big patches of fur. And so she's come a really long way, but you can still tell just um, she's, she's very timid uh, at times. And you can tell that whatever was happening around her when she was that young and printed on her, um, 
So we just give her all the love we can and she is a big snuggle butt and we adore her. So um, those are our dogs and you will, I'm sure, see lots of videos and photos of them um, over the course of my floss tubes because I said, as I said, I'm obsessed with them. Um, so Teresa also asked, what kind of job do you have that takes you to so many esoteric places? Um, this is another subject that I'm going to try to be brief on because when I start talking about my work, I get a little bit verbose <laughs> um, and I can go completely off on a tangent and I don't want to take the focus away from what we're here for, which is the stitching. Um, I'll just say that I work for an international NGO that does a lot of, um, they do some work here in the United States, but we also do a lot of work in the global south. Um, we have a whole division that's dedicated to uh, to global health. I, I work in a division um, and I work on a team that focuses on agriculture development. Um, and that that work has a really broad reach. So we um, we fund all kinds of agriculture research. And so things like trying to develop improved varieties of staple crops like wheat and maize and cassava um, and trying to ensure that farmers have access to have access to those varieties so that they're more productive, um, that those varieties are heat tolerant or drought tolerant or pest resistant. Um, and so trying to, to help with farmers that way. And then we work all the way down the value chain. So um, the team that I particularly work on within agriculture focuses on enabling country systems in Africa and in and South Asia. So primarily like Bangladesh and India. And then in, in Africa, we have a couple of key countries that we really work closely with. Um, but that work is, is about working with policymakers and, um, and governments to, um, to craft pro-poor policies and policies that are designed to um, be responsive to the needs of smallholder farmers and small livestock keepers and other small-scale producers. Uh, we're also working with governments to help shape inclusive markets. So um, ensuring that women have access to those markets, um, trying to think about how gender plays into to that and improving outcomes for women. Um, but also um, thinking about ensuring that farmers, so there's, there's multiple kinds of markets. There's input out markets where farmers are able to access seeds and products and, and veterinary services and things like that but then also output markets where farmers can sell their surplus. And so we work with governments to try and help them um, in, ensure that uh, small scale producers are able to participate in those markets. Um, so I will stop there, but that that's uh, the work that I, that I do is kind of focused in those spaces. And, and um, so it's, it can be very interesting and very challenging. And then the final question came from Sylvia W. And this is sort of on a related subject. Sylvia suggested that I might want to share about some of the places that I've traveled to, because as I had mentioned in my first video, um, given the current coronavirus crisis, um, we're not traveling because it's just not safe to travel right now. And so um, my husband and I are also looking at um, some ways that we can maybe incorporate that in a, uh, videos here and there and maybe talk about some of the places I've been. Um, frankly, a lot of times it's just going someplace and meeting and having meetings in hotels or, you know, um, going to a government building. And so, you know, there's not a lot I can share about that or a lot that would be terribly exciting. Um, but, you know, there are occasions where I'm able to get out and go visit someplace or maybe share some, um, some images or video from some of the villages that I visited. So um, if that's something that you folks are interested in is maybe hearing about some of the, the trips that I've already taken or the places I've already been, um, because it looks like it is going to be a long time before it is safe for us to travel again, then um, if that's something everyone's interested in, then we'll look at maybe kind of tacking that on to, to some of the videos in some way. So we'll figure something out. So thank you. Um, and then finally, I also just wanted to say we did get a little bit of technical feedback from one or two folks um, about a few things in the video that would be make something easier to see or easier to read. And so I wanted to say thank you for that feedback. Uh, we are going to work on that and hopefully um, from this video forward, we'll be able to, to, to make some adjustments. Um, and just wanted to say that we're, we welcome that kind of feedback and, you know, ultimately our goal is to make videos that are interesting and engaging and entertaining and informative. Um, and so let us know how we can continue to improve on that. All right, um, fine. Next, next, I want to just give you guys a quick update. So first of all, thank you to everybody for all of your really sweet comments, um, uh, on my last video, um, sharing with you about Bear and his upcoming surgery. 
Um, I just, that, that touched my heart that so many of you cared and that so many of you said that you would be praying for him. So thank you for that. Um, his surgery is scheduled on June 20th. So um, if, you, if you think about it, please do say a prayer for him that everything goes well and that he has a quick recovery. Um, the surgeon tells us we have a long road ahead before he's fully recovered to you know whatever his new 100% is gonna be. Um, he'll never be good as new, but um, it's, it, it is a long road to recovery. And so, um, but we're, we're looking forward to him feeling better. So I am gonna talk to you about a couple of my previous finishes. Um, and um, I actually gave my mom a call because as I was sharing with you in my last video, so many of my finishes have found their way into her house. And so I thought it would be great to, uh, to raid her stash of some of my finishes. So I borrowed one from her. Um, and both of these are gonna be lavender and lace designs. So the first one I'm gonna share with you is Morning Song. And this is what it looks like. This one I finished way back in the year 2000, if you can believe that. It's 20 years old, which blew my mind that it's been that long since I stitched this. Um, this is on a mystery linen. I believe it's a 32 count. I actually have no idea what color that fabric is. And we did have it professionally framed. Um, and this is a really, really beautiful piece. Um, it was, I remember this being a challenge because it is a full coverage for um, as a lavender and lace. And there is a ton of confetti up in this top section, which took me a long time to get through. Um, but I think the effect is really beautiful and it turned out really, really well. I have no idea how long this took or anything like that, but really lovely design. And my mom has been enjoying it for a very long time and it's held up quite well. Um, this one, I actually recently, within the last couple of years, um, those of you who watch Yanni will recognize this design. She also has stitched this and she did a wonderful conversion, um, color conversion on the hair on this because she wanted this to reflect her children. And I thought that just turned out beautiful. So if you're not already watching her channel, I would encourage you to go check it out. She has this up on the wall um, of her many beautiful finishes. And so you can also see her version of it there. But yeah, so this is Morning Song, Lavender and Lace, um, and one of my long ago finishes that I'm really proud of. Um, and then the other Lavender and Lace that I'm going to show you is um, a more recent finish. I did this one, I actually started this in 2010, and this is Oh Christmas Tree by Lavender and Lace. Um, and I had started this in 2010, 2011, sometime in that period. And I did about uh, maybe a quarter of the design. Um, and I had started into the Christmas tree and it was so confetti heavy. Um, and you, you would just do a handful of stitches and then have to skip around. And it was just, honestly, it wasn't the most pleasant design to stitch. I did not enjoy stitching it that much. Um, and I was stitching monogamously at the time still. And so I got burned out on it fairly quickly and ended up putting it aside. And um, I wasn't sure I was, I was actually going to finish it. And then back in 2018, toward the end of 2018, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. It's so beautiful, I wanna get it finished. And so I pulled it back out and I powered through it. Um, and I'm really glad I did because this, this turned out so beautifully. I love the way it ended up um, as far as how it's framed. And there's a couple of things that I really particularly love about this design. Um, one of them is um, you'll notice that I did a color conversion on the little boy because I really wanted this piece to be reflective of my family and what my family looks like. And so for me, that was really fun to be able to do that. It took a couple of tries to get it right. The first time I stitched him, he looked very gray. Um, and, and so I needed to pull all of that out and restitch him to kind of get some of that wonderful warmth in him. But, um, but I'm pretty pleased with how he turned out. And then um, the other thing that I really love in this design is, so I'll kind of pull this out so hopefully you can kind of see that, is these bead garlands. They're actually true bead garlands that you create and then attach um, to, to the, the, the piece. Um, they're not hand-stitched bead by bead. And I just, I love that that aspect of this, that they're true hanging garlands. And I just think that's so beautiful and really unique. Um, and it was really fun because the chart shows you where the attachment points are. And you know, you have in the little finished picture, you kind of have a suggestion of what the drape should look like, but you really get to sort of drape these 
um, and put the garland on the tree the way you want it to look. And so for me, that was a really, really fun component of this particular design. So I love now bringing this out and displaying it at Christmas time with my decor, and it's just beautiful. So there you go, Oh Christmas Tree by Lavender and Lace. Um, again, I think this is a 32 count linen. I have no idea what color it is. It's a mystery fabric, but there you go. I have some exciting news and that is, so you might remember in my last video, I was talking about how I had two pieces that were really close to a finish and I thought it was probably a long shot to get both of them done, but miracles do happen. And I have two finishes to share with you today and I'm really excited about that. So the first one I'm going to show you, I finished my August cottage um, just a few days ago, actually. And um, actually, I should put that down. Well, no, it's finished. You guys don't need to see what it's gonna look like when it's finished, because here it is. Uh, so this is my August cottage. Um, this is stitched on 28 count mushroom Lugana using all of the called for flosses. Um, and it was really, really fun to, it was a really, really fun stitch. Uh, I also saw in the last, the most recent update that was sent out, uh, that was put up by um, Debbie and Kef from Snug Harder Crafts that Debbie finished hers as well. And I had such a good laugh watching them because um, they were talking about this little uh, thing right here on the piece. And we both like, the, the two of them and me both were looking at that and we were all like, you know, not together because I don't know them, but I was thinking the same thing they were when we were looking at this of why is there a bench with waves like getting ready to crash over it? Who's gonna sit on that bench? What is that? And then they had the realization, that's not a bench, that's a dock. <laughs> and as soon as they said it, I laughed so hard because I was like, oh my gosh, that's a dock, it's not a bench. And it makes so much more sense. Um, so, but it does kind of look like a bench, doesn't it? Anyway, that's the August Cottage. Um, and so I'm really glad to have that one finished. Really enjoyed stitching it. And um, over the next couple weeks, I'm gonna make a little trip out to the fabric store. I have a couple of um, finished cottages now that I haven't done the full finishing on. So I need to go pick up some fabrics and get those mounted. And so um, be on the watch in the next couple of weeks because hopefully I'll be able to share some fully finished uh, cottages with you. All right. Uh, next to share is I had a big finish and I actually just finished this last night. Um, so I'm going to put, we'll put up a picture of what this looked like the last time you saw it. This is my, um, winter queen by Shannon Christine designs. And here she is and she is all finished. Um, so I had a white, a stitch, a marathon of white stitches to get through to finish her off. But I'm really, really pleased with how she turned out. As you can see, she is still in the Q-snap, so I haven't washed or ironed her yet. That's going to be happening in the next week. And then I'm going to get started on picking out um, how I want to frame her up and get her ready to give to my niece as a surprise birthday present. Um, so she is stitched on 32 count Blue Fusion Jobelin by Silk Weaver. Um, and yeah, she, um, I checked my spreadsheet and she took me 56 days of actual stitching. So I started her in October of 2019, um, and then finished her, of course, June of 2020 and yeah, 56 days of actual stitching. So there she is. Um, and we'll, we'll put up a picture, uh, more of a close up picture of what she looks like. So you can see some of the beautiful detail of the beads and, the, um, the sparkly flosses that, that make her who she is. So there we go. Very proud of her and can't wait to see her when she's fully finished. I'll be sure to share that when that, when she's done. So because I've had such a great couple of weeks with getting finishes, um, unexpectedly, I only have one active whip to share with you today that I've worked on in the last couple of weeks. And that is my Celtic autumn. So we're going to put up a picture of what that looked like, or actually what that will look like when it is finished. Um, and this, again, this is the original picture or uh, the original colors that it was charted in that's an in indigo and gold. And I am doing the Janet Granger conversion to more traditionally um, autumn colors. And then this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. This is being stitched on 32 count earthen Belfast linen by Picture This Plus. Um, and this is what she looks like now. So I'm really, really happy with the progress I made on her. Um, I, I didn't get to spend as much time working on her as I had thought I would, 
but I, I think that I got to a good place nonetheless. So um, I worked on, I put in another of these motifs along the border, um, and those take a lot longer to stitch than you might think, given the size. I kind of think of those, I'm not gonna say they're anything truly close to a chatelaine because they just, there's no specialty stitches. It's not the same degree of complexity, but it's similar in that there's probably between six and seven colors in each motif, and then all the different beads. Um, and so they just, they actually take a couple of hours to, you know, to put in and get them looking good. Um, so I did put in one motif and then I went ahead and came back to her, to the lady herself and picked up where I was um, with her skirt and then worked my way all the way down that diagonal to the, the bottom of her skirt. Uh, and really, really pretty how she's coming together. I got all of that beaded, got all of the, um, the petite treasure braid, the gold metallic put in and then was able to start the next diagonal and, and start working my way down the next the next section of her skirt. So she's coming along beautifully. I am really, really pleased with her and really enjoying, uh, really enjoying working on her. So that is Celtic Autumn, the Janet Granger Conversion by Lavender and Lace. Okay. So I always say that the best way to celebrate a finish is with a new start. And because I had two finishes, that means I got to have two brand new starts. Um, and so the first one that I will show you, both of these I just have started within the last 72 hours. So there's very little progress to actually share with you, um, but I'll show you what I've done. So the first new start that I had was the January Cottage by Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, I'll go ahead and put this picture up. I know you can't see it. So we'll show a picture of what it's gonna look like when it is finished. And as I do with all of the Country Cottage Needleworks cottages, I am stitching this on a 28 count mushroom Lugana. Um, and you're gonna see like the tiniest of new starts here, but this is what I've managed to accomplish so far. So just beginning work on this top border here, getting in some of those pretty little snowflakes. Um, but already off to off to enjoying this one. So we'll see what I'm able to get accomplished between now and the next time you see it. But that is my teeny tiny start on the January cottage. And then my next new start, this one I just got to work on last night for the first time. So as I was telling you in my last video, I was uh, looking forward to being able to start the Primitive Merry Christmas Pillow by Abbey Rose Designs. And we'll put up a bigger picture of what that will look like when it's finished as well. Um, this one I am really, really looking forward to working on. So uh, this is my teeny tiny start on this. So I've started working on the M in Merry Christmas. Um, this one, I decided to do it a little bit differently. So this one is charted, the, um, the design calls for brash by Picture This Plus as the fabric. I decided I wanted to do something a little less primitive. So I changed out the fabric and I'm, I'm um, subbing in a couple different flosses. So the fabric that I am using, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to, I know it's, it's everyone has a hard time picking up the sparkle on video and so I don't know if we'll be able to do that. But I am stitching this on a uh, 32 count, it's a gold opalescent, uh, and it's natural Belfast linen, also by Picture This Plus. Um, I picked this up earlier this year, I, I made a little day trip down to Acorns and Threads in Portland. Um, and so I picked this up there and I really am enjoying it. I'm excited to see this design stitched in, in a less primitive palette, something that's a little bit brighter and that will go more with, with my overall Christmas decor, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, and the red that I'm choosing to use, that's gonna be the main red in the design, um, I believe the design calls for uh, Cherry Bark and Cranberry by Classic Color Works. And I've decided to sub in um, Manor Red and then this is Ribbon Red by Classic Color Works because Ribbon Red is my favorite Christmas red. It's, I think it's just really, really beautiful. So I think that's gonna look really pretty. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing this come together. I'm also enjoying how, I know that's just a teeny tiny little start, but for a chart that small, that's kind of a, you know, it's a little bit of somewhat meaningful progress. And so I think it's gonna be fun to work on a piece that will actually be finished much more quickly than my normal pieces in my rotation. 
So Merry Christmas, Primitive Merry Christmas Pillow by Abby Rose Design. Now that we've talked about um, my new starts, I thought I would kind of share with you guys for all of the, my structuredness and how I approach my stitching, I'm actually thinking about um, potentially on a temporary basis, adding a new slot to my rotation. Um, and part of that is to scratch an itch. So as we're all aware, the situation with COVID-19 has made travel um, both domestic and international, um, the, the safety of that is questionable either because, you know, you can carry the virus to other places or you can go someplace and bring the virus, you know, bring the virus back. Um, and so it's, it's just not a good idea to travel. And, and the organization I work for, you know, our, our travel is going to be restricted for, it looks like some time to come. And I am really, really missing, uh, the people in the places where I get to spend time, um, and, and, you know, just, I, I miss that part of my life quite a bit. Um, and the relationships and the, and the friendships that I've made. And, um, and so I was kind of doing a little bit of searching the other day on Etsy and I ran across a few charts that just immediately, um, uh, evoked some of the places that I've been and that I've spent a lot of time and that I really love. And so I'm, I'm thinking about, um, picking up one or two charts and, um, and potentially stitching those as kind of a, you know, an indulgence um, and kind of bringing those places home to me. Um, and just kind of, you know, in this time where, where I may not be able to travel for a while. And so I thought I would show you the three that I'm thinking about and see what you guys think. Um, so the first one is called To Market and all of these are available on Hannah's Needle Crafts on Etsy. I'll include a link in the description box. But these just capture the um, sort of these um, quintessential things that I tend to see when I travel um, in the places that I, that I go to. And so the first one is called To Market. And this is just a wonderful image of some women and children on their way to the local market to sell their produce or their, their chickens and eggs. And, um, and it's just, it's absolutely a delightful design. And I've seen this so often in my travels, you know, people walking along the side of the road, heading to the local market to, to sell um, their surplus produce. And so when I see this, it just immediately takes me back. Um, the second one that I'm thinking about is called Bush Market. And this is a wonderful image of something that you'd see a lot of times along the roadside. It's very, very common to see just a few folks in a local village um, who have set up and they've got, you know, all of their produce on the little stands and there might be a meat seller or, you know, somebody selling nuts or bananas or what have you. Um, and that's really captured beautifully in this particular chart as well. And so I'm, I'm kind of contemplating that. And then the third one is called Roadside Cellars. Um, and again, this is very similar. You, um, you see this particularly in touristy areas where um, there'll be all these roadside cellars and they'll have beautiful carvings or textiles or baskets that are hand woven and that are available for sale. And because I see that so often, um, I just, it really, it really kind of brings that feeling back of these beautiful places I've been. And so I'm, I'm thinking of having that temporary slot. So take a look at the, we'll, we'll include um, the pictures of those on the screen and take a look at those and let me know what you think. Um, and if you're interested, I will include some links to some other places where you can find designs that are similar to this. Um, if you're looking for, for things like that, um, cause I know those are, they're really, they're really fun to stitch and such beautiful bright colors. So I'm going to wrap up by just telling you what I'm going to be working on between now and the next time we film. Um, so I am going to continue to work on the primitive Merry Christmas pillow, uh, for the rest of today. And we'll see how much progress I can make on that. And then this next week after that is, uh, finished, I'll have a whole week to work on my rose trellis in. And I'm really, really hoping that I'll actually be able to finish that top row of pages and get down into the second row of pages. So we'll see. Um, after that, I'm gonna put a week in on my Rose Quaker sampler. And uh, I'm hoping to get through page six on that. I think I've got a reasonably good shot of finishing that page. And then I'll continue to plug away on my new start, my January cottage, and see how much progress I can make on that. So that's what I'm gonna be up to. Um, that and caring for, caring for the bear as he recovers from his upcoming surgery. 
So I just wanted to say um, thank you again for all of you who have come back to join me today. I'm so glad that, um, that you're here. Thanks to all of you that have joined me for the first time. I hope that you've enjoyed what, uh, what I've shared with you. And if you have, please like, subscribe. I love all of the comments, so feel free to comment. If you have questions or other things you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I'd love it if you followed me on Instagram. I post weekly progress updates there, and my name on Instagram is globetrotting underscore stitcher. And then I finally just wanted to say a quick thanks. Um, I mentioned this in my first video, but these videos really truly are a collaboration with my husband, Gary. Um, he's the owner of GMP Media Productions, and I, I think the amount of time and creativity and work that he puts into making these wonderful videos, you know, he does all of the photos, all of the editing, all of the bringing in the, the, the graphics and the sound effects and, and all of the, the stuff that makes those videos, just the amount of work that I think folks don't realize that goes into that. Literally all I do is I do the stitching and then I sit here and chatter on for a few minutes, but there's a tremendous volume of work that goes in and a lot of his personality that also gets embedded in these videos. And so I just want to make sure to acknowledge that because it's, um, it's not as visible because you don't see his face on camera. And so I just wanted to say thank you to him and, and um, for all of the work that he's putting in and the way that he's supporting me in, in doing this as a project together. Um, it's really a delight to work with him. So having said that, um, I hope that you are all well, that you're staying safe and that you continue to stitch on all the things that bring you joy. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.